In today's video, we're going to be talking about properties of continuous functions. Now, just like limits, continuous functions have their own set of properties that we can use to more easily solve and find out if functions are continuous across a certain plane. Rule number one, k times f of x is continuous everywhere. And when I write continuous, I'm going to write continuous with a dot. So that's what that means. This is continuous just shortened because it's a long word. Continuous everywhere. So as an example, if we have the function y equals x, we can change this function into y equals 2x, with k being our scalar on our original function, and it's still continuous across the entire plane. And this is true for all continuous functions. Property number two, f of x plus g of x and f of x minus g of x are continuous everywhere. Continuous everywhere. So if we add two functions together or subtract two functions, they're still going to be continuous across the entire domain no matter what. Despite the fact that we manipulated by addition and subtraction, they're still continuous. As a quick example for both of these, example number one, if we have 7x squared plus 3x, this is still continuous everywhere despite that we added two functions together that don't even have the same power. Still continuous though, so it doesn't matter. And as an example for subtraction, 4x cubed minus 6x is also still continuous across the entire domain. Essentially, even if we manipulate two functions by addition and subtraction with each other, they're still continuous everywhere, which is nice and convenient. Property number three, f of x times g of x is continuous everywhere. If we multiply two functions together, that is also continuous across the entire domain. As an example, we can use something like, I don't know, example 7x times 5x cubed. Despite the fact that we were manipulating these two functions by multiplication, it is still continuous everywhere. You may notice that this is very similar to rule number two. I just didn't put it with them because it's kind of a different type of operation. And now property number four, you may guess is about division and you'd be right. Property number four, f of x divided by g of x, two functions being divided by each other are continuous everywhere. It's set for one spot. We need to tack on one extra rule to rule number four here in order for this to be true. We cannot have g of x be zero in the denominator. We cannot divide by zero in math no matter what. It just doesn't make sense. If we divide by zero, this function is no longer continuous. So let's add our extra little rule down here. Except if g of x, our bottom function or the denominator is equal to zero. If this is equal to zero, this function is no longer continuous anywhere. But as long as g of x is something fun, like anything other than zero, we'll be fine. As an example, let's just say we had the function eight x cubed divided by 7x. This function is continuous everywhere despite the fact that we manipulated it by division. And the last property of continuous function we're going to talk about in this list is rule number five. And this one's a little more confusing, so we're going to do an example to show how this works in just a second here. f of g of x, so fog, in other words, f of g of x is continuous at any point c so at c, which is just a constant, as long as, or if, if, wow, that was a terrible dot, if f is continuous, continuous at c. Now this probably doesn't make a ton of sense just written out, so we're gonna do an example to clear this one up. So let's do an example over here. Let's say we had two functions, f of x and g of x. So f of x and g of x, and f of x is equal to one divided by x, and g of x is equal to x minus two. I want you to tell me if f of g of x is continuous at x equals two. How may we go about solving this problem? Well, first we need to figure out which function is being put into the other function. Remember when we have f of g of x or something of another function, we plug in the inner function into our outer function. In this case, we have f of g of x, which means our g of x will be plugged in to f of x and replace the x down here. But first we need to figure out what g of x actually equals. We know what g of x is. We know what point of x we're gonna be at. So g of x or g of two in this case, is equal to two minus two, which is equal to zero. So now we need to take g of two and plug it in for f. g of two is equal to zero. So now we just need to find f of zero, which is equal to one divided by zero, which of course does not exist. 
What does this all mean? Well, since we have a one over zero here, that means we have a discontinuity here, meaning that the function does not exist at whatever this point was. And this point, if you remember, is g of x at x equals two, which of course equaled zero, meaning that f is not continuous at x equals two. So our answer is not continuous. I'm just gonna write not and underline it, something like that. Because f is not continuous at the point c that we created, this entire function or our f of g of x is not continuous at x equals two. Like I said, this last one is a little bit harder to wrap your head around and it may take a little practice to understand it a little better, but these other ones are pretty straightforward. And just to review, let's go over them all real quick. Number one, k of f of x is continuous everywhere, meaning that if we add in scalar to the beginning of a function, it'll stay continuous even though we added the scalar. Moving from x to two of x does not change the fact that this function is continuous everywhere. Number two, f of x plus g of x and f of x minus g of x are also continuous everywhere. This means that if we add two functions together or subtract two functions, they will still be continuous across the entire domain no matter what. Number three, f of x times g of x is also continuous everywhere. If we multiply two functions together, they will remain continuous across the entire domain. Number four, f of x divided by g of x is also continuous everywhere, assuming that g of x is not equal to zero. If g of x equals zero, we divide by zero and that just doesn't work. But as long as our denominator doesn't equal zero, despite the fact that we divided one function by another, it remains continuous across the entire domain. And number five, f of g of x is continuous at a point c if f is continuous at c. This means that as long as f of x exists wherever we plug in our x to our g of x, the function is continuous at that point. I hope this video helped you out today. Consider subscribing if it did help you. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about finding if functions are continuous on open and closed intervals. If you need more help in Calculus One, I'll link the entire playlist here. And if you're really interested in learning more about calculus, you should subscribe because I'm gonna be teaching all of Calculus One on this channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.